right now, thank you everyone for being here on this uh, July 4th weekend. It is Saturday, July 2nd, 2022 today. And um, I wanna welcome everyone. And our theme today, I had to come up with a theme. I knew what I wanted to do for the class and then I had to decide what the theme was. And basically what the theme is, is how to um, enhance the somatic movement you're already doing, whether you do them on a daily basis or a few times a week, how to create variations, how to add a few new kinds of movements into your daily routine for variety and to continue to, um, continue to mobilize your joints and, and give every part of your body um, movement and then release out of movement. So, um, we're also going to, my suggestion is that sometime during your day, you add a few neck and shoulder movements. We sit so much, we have an opportunity to do some head and shoulder work and even other kinds of movements when we sit to do when you're out there standing and walking, working in your garden, whatever, walking to your car, you have an opportunity to do a few walking exercises or standing exercises. Those are great things to do. And then when you're doing your floor movements to enhance your floor movements, move slowly, move in comfort, back away from pain, follow any medical directives. If you, and, um, and I've got a, a lot planned for today. So we're just going to, frankly, we're going to, uh, oh, props. Let me just say a word about props. Here's what you'll need. We're going to be in prone position today. If you're a person that likes, a uh, prone is on your belly, if that likes a bed pillow under a large part of your body, whether it's this way or this way, you'll need to go get a bed pillow. Not everybody has to have that, but some people know they're way more comfortable with a bed pillow. Some people like a smaller pillow uh, that they can use in prone, and some people's heads are so far forward, they need quite a bit of support around their, under their head when they're lying on their back. Most people that I see in the screen need some kind of support under their head. It could be, just happen to have New Rules of Posture by Mary Bond, which I think is a great book. Uh, but a book, uh, there's thin, thick, double books. That's also a, a good kind of support behind your head. And some kind of bolster or pillow for under your knees if you like that. So you want to make yourself comfortable and you want those things at the ready. Okay, let's start in sitting. The first thing is we want to sit well. So you're, uh, so we a chair. We're starting in a chair. So please get yourself a chair, not the floor. You can you can apply these things to the floor, but we're going to do this in sitting. Most people when they work at the computer, they're on a chair. Um, most people I see that do a lot of floor sitting have a very hard time really maintaining a nice straight spine, they tend to sag after a while. So this is for chair and you can apply it to other positions, but feet on the floor, you wanna feel your feet on the floor and you wanna feel your sits bones. So here's my semi disarticulated skeleton. And these are your sits bones and when you're sitting, that is your main base of support are your sits bones. And you can just kind of roll around from side to side to feel your sits bones. You want to sit nice and evenly on your sits bones, just like your feet want to be evenly weighted and your ankles under your knees approximately. And you want to have a nice, easy, tall stature. Now, if you gently start rocking into arch and flatten, so when you inhale and arch, let me see if I can. <clears throat> this might be enough for you to see. So when you inhale and arch and you rock forward on your sits bones towards your thighs, that's, we call that the arch. And if you feel your low back, if you can feel it, if you, well, you can feel it without touching it, but if you can touch your low back, it's, your back is going to be in contraction. It, your, pair, your pair of vertebrals, your erector spinae muscles are probably quite contracted. And then you come through your neutral and you move into um, 
a posterior tilt or what we call flatten or curl, your belly is contracted, you squeezed, because your belly is contracted, your abdominal muscles are contracted, now you've squeezed into your organs and your intestines. And then as you arch, you come through your neutral, go into the arch. Now, arching and uh, flattening or curling are fine. What's not fine is to be stuck. So again, go into the arch and feel how that contracts your back. If when you sit or when you stand or in, when you are in a constant arch, you're keeping your back muscles and specifically your low back muscles in a lot of contraction. So come out of that through neutral and go back into a contracting of the belly, a posterior tilt, and now try to take a deep breath. Very hard to take a deep breath. And you're sitting on your tailbone. Instead of sitting on your uh, sits bones, you're sitting on your coccyx or tailbone. And that's not, a, it's not a good position. And you can't breathe well. And another thing I wanna talk about today is the pelvic floor. And you want what we call, this is from Mary Bond actually, a spacious pelvic floor. And so come to sit just uh, comfortably. And let me, let me just go through the pelvic floor for a moment. So these, these are your sits bones right here. These are your sits bones. And if we turn this guy so that you can see his pelvic floor. So here's his sits bones. This is his pubic bone. This is the coccyx or tailbone. And this sling under here, this is the pelvic floor. Now, if you draw, if I draw a line from sits bone to sits bone and divide the pelvic floor, I have an anterior or front part uh, of the pelvic floor and I have a posterior part. And there's actually two triangles. If you keep this line between the two sits bones and you draw a diagonal line to the center of the pubic bone on each side. This is your anterior uh, triangle. It's where the vagina and the urethra and on a man, man, the base of the scrotum is. And your posterior triangle is you draw this line again, and now you draw a diagonal line from the coccyx or tailbone on each side, and now you have the posterior triangle, and that's where your anus is. Now, when you go into, on an exhale, when you go into a posterior tilt or a flatten or gentle curl, most people squeeze their posterior triangle. And if you sit like this, you are squeezing the muscles in the posterior, um, pelvic floor triangle, and you're squeezing around your anus for hours and hours a day. That's not a good thing to do. So you want to have, as you go through your arch and flatten, you might even need to make your legs a little wider. If you're a person that likes to keep their legs really narrow and tight together, you're probably already squeezing the pelvic floor. Now, I'm not saying you have to have it really wide, but you might need to adjust where you, where you put your legs so that you feel a little bit more spacious in your pelvic floor. And that's a really important cue and indicator for your whole posture is a sense that you're not squeezing either your anterior or posterior triangle. But when you go into, so if you, when you arch, low back tension is the biggest problem usually. And on, in a posterior tilt, many problems, squeezing around the ankle, ankle anus, um, sitting on your coccyx, not being able to breathe fully and squeezing your intestines and internal organs for a long period of time. So come back to a more straight upright sitting and you want to start being able to also, whether you're sitting or standing, you want to start being able to tune in to your deep, your deep uh, vertical axis. Your brain is always paying attention because that's your line of gravity. Your brain is always paying attention to from the crown to the center of your pelvic floor, right down through your, the center of your body in whatever 
position you're in, but sitting and standing in particular when you're in the gravity line, you want to start being able to tune into that deep interior uh, vertical axis, that deep interior midline deep in the body. So a few cues about sitting, readjust yourself in sitting. Every time you get up to go get a drink of water, a cup of coffee, tea, go to the bathroom, come out, readjust your sitting so that you're really more upright, you're straighter, you, can, you have a spacious pelvic floor, you can breathe and um, maybe go do, do a little rocking until you find that neutral point. For me, my neutral point is not right on the very, very bottom part of my sits bones. It's just a little in front for me. You have to find where your right, correct place is on your sits bones for you. But it's going to be either in the middle of your sits bones or just a speck in front uh, or to the front side of your sits bones but not in an arch. And you can feel your low back muscles. Right now, my low back muscles are nice and much more relaxed than when I go into an arch. Okay, while we are um, in this position, I wanna do the upper trapezius move. And I'm gonna do it with variations, only one repetition per variation. So please follow along. And uh, you're going to have to pay attention to the directions I give. This is my right upper trapezius. It goes up actually above the top of the neck into the skull, down close to the spine and across the top of the shoulders. And what you're going to do is you're going to turn your head to the left. Yes, to the left. Your arm is in a neutral position and it's just draped down long. Let's see if I can get this better. And your, and your arm is, is long, your head is to the left, your right arm is long, you're going to gently, gently, people overdo this and then it's worse, shrug your shoulder and tip your head back. And what, what I like to add is pretend you have a straw coming out of your ear and you're just gonna tip that straw down, tip your head down a little bit and then Relax out of that and come back to center. Now roll your right arm in, your shoulder might come forward. Turn your head to the left, tip your head back, gently shrug your shoulder, get that ear straw in your, in your ear and gently side bend or tip your ear down. Slowly come out of that to your new neutral. And now you're gonna roll your right arm outward. Your shoulder will go backward a little bit. Roll your head to the left. Gently shrug your right shoulder, tip your head back and tilt, you've got that straw in the ear, tilt your, your ear down a little bit. It just enhances this move a little bit. Slowly come out of that and rest. And just notice the difference between your two shoulders. And now let's go to the other side, arm in neutral. You're going to turn your head to the right. Your arm is just hanging down in neutral. Gently shrug up and tip your head back. Now you've got the straw coming out of your left ear and tip your ear a little in the direction of the straw. Slowly come out of that, come back to your center. Roll your arm in, your shoulder may come forward, turn your head to the right, Sh gently shrug your left shoulder, tip your head back, tilt your ear down as if that, you know, that straw is coming out of your ear and you're tilting it down. Slowly come out of that, back to your neutral. And now, uh, uh, did we do three? Did we do, did we just do, I, I lost track. Let's do the posterior. I can't even remember what I did, sorry. Roll your arm back, not a problem to repeat. Shrug your shoulder gently, roll your head to the right. Shrug your shoulder, tip your head back, tilt your ear to the left. Slowly come out of that and just feel, feel your, 
feel your uh, whatever you feel. I love that it's a little bit of enhancement from what we usually do with the upper trapezius. Um, and I, I like that variation a lot. I'm always looking for variation from my regular cat moves. Okay, let's stand up. We're gonna just do a little bit in standing. And um, <clears throat> let's see if I can. The first thing you wanna do is, let's see if we can get a little more of me. Let's see if that works. Uh, you want to um, stand well. So I'm going to take off my glasses. And what you want to do is um, feel your feet, get your feet nice and grounded and, and evenly weighted if you can. Spacious pelvic floor. So you may need to decide, okay, if my feet are really, if my legs are really close together, how that squeezes my pelvic floor. This is obviously out of balance. What is comfortable for me? Not what model you've read. Oh, your feet are supposed to be four inches apart or whatever. You have to be careful about models. Models may be guides, but they can put you into a very bad habit if you start believing them and override your internal sensations. Spacious pelvic floor, you want to uh, slightly bend and unbend your knees, no hyperextended knees. When you bend your knees, it's very small, your knees go forward and your buttocks goes backward and then come up and do that a few times. Knees go forward, buttocks go as if you're going to sit down, but make it very small. More as a range of motion activity, we call it means whereby in um, Hannah somatic education. And uh, so you're nice and straight. You want to make sure, I'm going to put this up, of your head position. You don't want to tip your head back and you don't want your head forward. You want a nice long neck, but you don't want to tuck your chin like this because that just gives you a lot of tension in your neck. So you want to be tall with a long neck with your eyes on the horizon. So be able to come back to the horizon so that your head has a lot of freedom bobbing on your neck and your teleceptors, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears are as much as possible on the horizon can come back to the horizon because that's where they work the best for seeing, for smelling, for hearing, for uh, anything with the jaw, talking, eating, kissing, all of those kinds of things. So you really a good standing and that deep internal midline, very, very important. Um, oh, I know in standing, I'm not done, sorry. Here's, a, here's a Bill Keel, um, a colleague in Hannah Somatic Education did a wonderful um, presentation this week. And he used this, I love it, I'm going to um, add it to my repertoire a lot. It's something you can do when you're out walking or standing and then walk in your house. If you bring your hands on your hip pointers, the as is, the part of the hip that sticks out in front, what you want to do is you're going to walk a little bit. And as you take a step forward, you want to see if you're bringing your right hemipelvis, the right half of your pelvis forward. And when you take a step left with your left foot forward, you want to see if you're bringing your left hemipelvis forward. Your hemipelvis is, I'll go back. I have just a teeny bit of room here. You don't have to stay within any camera. I'm not really looking at you anyway. It's too small. But as you step forward, your forward leg should be bringing your hemipelvis of that side forward. Your hemipelvis should be coming forward. The other hemipelvis is going backward so that you have one hemipelvis going forward, one hemipelvis going backward. It's not quite this big, the motion. But that motion is coming from your sacroiliac joints. That motion is coming from
your sacroiliac joints, you have one on each side, where your sacrum, this is your sacrum, meets your ilium bone. In there, you have a little bit of motion, it's called nutation. And you have more motion at the pubic joints on each side of the disc. And so that ability of your each hemipelvis to be able to rotate a little bit in opposite directions comes from mobility in your SI joints and your pubic joints. And so this is like an assessment or test. So as you do it one or two more times, notice when you bring your right leg forward, is your right hemipelvis coming forward? When you bring your left leg forward, is your left hemipelvis coming forward? Are they coming forward equally? Does one come forward more easily? Maybe one comes, maybe one side moves and the other side really is quite stuck. So you're just gaining some information for yourself. And as we go through and do our movements, and you also add your daily cat movements, if you do those, you can start changing that mobility to be more even in each hemipelvis coming forward. Your, your hemipelvis comes forward because when you walk, you are walking, you're starting your forward leg walk from the psoas. The psoas, you have one on each side. It actually hugs uh, the diaphragm. It comes down through the pelvis and it attaches to the upper thigh. You have one on each side. The function of the psoas is to bring, is to help you bring your leg forward. And as it brings your leg forward, it should be bringing that hemipelvis on that side forward. So it just brings your leg forward and then the rectus femoris continues to work that leg. And then when you go to the other side, it, the psoas starting all the way up here at the diaphragm, that's why your hemipelvis should come forward. As your leg comes forward, your hemipelvis on that side should come forward and the other hemipelvis goes back a little bit. So the function of the psoas is to get that each hemipelvis guiding each leg forward. It's a very important function of the psoas. Okay, that's what we're going to do today. And now we're gonna to go to the floor and we're gonna start in prone on your belly. That's where you may need uh, a bed pillow or you may not need that much pillowing. You may not need any, you may want a smaller pillow to put somewhere um, and you're going to lie down. You're gonna get your floor mat ready. You're gonna lie down on, your, on the floor you're gonna put one hand over the other with your forehead in the center, your legs are long and not in a C curve. <clears throat> okay, all right. And we're gonna start with a very simple back extension. And the goal is what a lot of people do is they start lifting their head, they start jerking up their head to get a really big arch. We're on our bellies, we're on our bellies. Hands, forehead down on your hands. And what, we're, what you wanna aim for today is to really go long. You want your head to go long towards the wall in front of you. And you wanna start going long and your length is helping your back gently arch, make it very small, a very small arch. I can see a few people, but not, so it's not so much of bringing your head back and lifting your back as much as getting your whole back to go long, getting your head to go forward, 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 hands stay on the floor until your head slightly lifts and it brings your back into a very gentle arch. And you can feel your muscles contract. Long extension is the key. And then come back down, practice that one more time. Your goal is to go long more than you lift. You go long more than you lift. And come back to center. And now we're gonna combine that back extension with um, a long leg lifting. 
Now, when you uh, lift a leg, you want your leg to be long. So for your leg to be long, you have to hike your opposite hip. So you have to decide, let's say you want, I'll, I'll give you an instructions. It, it, it's up to you if you wanna follow mine, but it's easier for me to give an instruction in a class. If you want your left leg to be the long lifting leg, you have to hip hike on the right. You're gonna bring your, so practice that. Bring your right hip towards your right armpit. Your right leg shortens, your left leg lengthens. Let that relax. Do it a few times more as a range of motion um, activity where you can just hike your hip, let it release, hike your hip, let it release. And now we'll put that together more pendicularly with our um, extension in our back and head. So on an inhale, your hands stay down on the floor, hike your right hip, feel your left leg get long. Now, your back and head get long, your left leg gets long, everything gets long, long, long. Let the length then finally allow your back, your head and your leg to gently lift a little. You want, the, you want length more than you want to be up toward the ceiling. And then slowly come down and rest and repeat that. So your goal is length. Inhale, hike your right hip, long left leg, long back, long head, get your back and head in length, get your long leg to go in length, let the length lift you. It can be very, the lift can be very small. The important part is to lift yourself in more length. It's a, it's it's better for your posture, it's better for your muscles, it's better for your fascia. And then come down and relax. Let's go and hip hike, practice hip hiking the left side, let the right side be long, and just practice that hip hiking on with the left side, right side long as a little bit of a means whereby a range of motion exercise where you hike your left hip, feel your right leg get long, you let it go, and you repeat that. And now we'll put it together with the upper body in, in length and more pendicularly. So hike your left hip, inhale, long back and head, long right leg, let the length, let the length finally lift you off the floor. And then you'll slowly come back down and you'll repeat that. Let the length, length in your back, length in your head, length in your right leg because you've hip hiked on the, on the left uh, and your right leg is now long. Let the length lift you. It may be smaller than you're used to doing, but you're doing it more in length, you're training your muscles and your fascia and your joints and your discs in your spine in a much better way and come down and relax. Okay, good. If you need to take care of your neck, please, you can press up and press your hands down into the floor and you can turn your head a little bit or you can nod. You always wanna take care of your, of your neck. And now we're gonna continue with our head centered uh, for, uh, for a moment. And uh, you're going to bend your knees and bring your feet in the air to wherever it's comfortable. Some people can bend their knees and their feet can face up toward the ceiling. And some people can bend their knees a little bit. However amount you can bend your knees, bend both knees, both feet in the air. And notice this relationship. You're going to bring both feet to your right. That means your knees are gonna to go to the left and notice that your right hemipelvis is going forward into the floor. Your left hemipelvis is lifting a little bit or getting lighter away from the floor. And come back with your feet to center and bring your feet over to the left. Your knees will be to the right. Notice your whichever direction, your feet to the left, your left hemipelvis 
That brings your left hemipelvis forward. Really feel the position of your hemipelvis. Understand what a forward, forward toward the floor, left hemipelvis is. And go back and forth just a little bit, noticing which hemipelvis is forward. What is the feel of bringing your hemipelvis, one hemipelvis forward, Coming back to center, bringing the other hemipelvis forward, coming back to center. It's very important to be able to orient towards your feeling which hemipelvis is forward and which is back. And slowly, but not too slowly because of time, bring your, knee, uh, bring your feet back to center and then slowly lower your feet at when, when I have a lot of time and I take it on my own, I really lower my feet slowly because lowering your feet slowly to the ground uh, lengthens your hamstrings. Today we'll do it kind of slowly, but not too slowly because of time. Okay. If you can position yourself so your head is to the, is to the right, you can, you can, and your right arm is gonna be down by your side. Yes, you heard me correctly. Face to the right, right arm down to your side. You can put a pillow under your head if you need to. You could even bend your left arm and bring the back of your left hand under your left cheek if you want to do that. Any way you can be comfortable. If you cannot turn your head to the right, you can uh, put your left palm down on the floor and put your forehead in the center of your left palm. Excuse me. Okay, now you might need a pillow at the ready, which I'm just realizing I should have told you a little earlier. You're gonna, bend, you're gonna leave your palm on the floor close, close to your body and bend your elbow outward a little bit. And if your elbow can stay on the floor, that's great. If it's not comfortable, you might have to put a pillow under it. And we're gonna work with some shoulder muscles. We're gonna start with the rhomboids and middle trapezius. You're going to gently lift your elbow, leave your palm on the floor, lift your elbow. It may move a little bit, move your, uh, lift your elbow away from the floor. And the point is to slide your, your right shoulder. I, I, did I say right? I hope I did. Right shoulder blade towards your spine. If you're translating it to the left, it would be your left shoulder blade. And then slowly come down. And you're gonna do this as a means whereby range of motion movement more as a flow, lift elbow, slide right shoulder blade, face to the right, right shoulder blade towards your spine. And then you come down, your right shoulder blade comes away from your spine. And repeat that a couple of times to get the flow. The important part of the movement is that your shoulder blade, your right shoulder blade can gently slide towards your spine and then slide away from your spine as your elbow finds the floor or perhaps a pillow on the floor. And you wanna get a feel for that and then rest. Okay, now your, your, your right arm, your face is to the right, your right arm should be long, your, your, your palm should not be near your face. Your, your palm should be, your right arm should be long at your side. I see some people who aren't quite that way. Now you're bending your, it, that's the position we were just working in. Your arm is long, your elbow is bent, but your, your hand is staying by your thigh or maybe your waist. And as you lift your elbow, your shoulder blade, I'm correcting it because I see some people got mixed up. Your shoulder blade is going toward and away from your spine. Your right arm stays by your side long, your face is to the right, your right arm is long, your right elbow is bent and it comes back to bring your shoulder blade back. Okay, we're gonna combine that with the lower body. Slightly bend your right arm, your back of your hand is on the floor near your thigh and you're going to bend your knees, put your feet in the air. Okay, your face is to the right. Your feet are going to go to the right. 
your right hemipelvis is going to come forward and you're going to lift your elbow and bring your shoulder shoulder blade your right shoulder shoulder blade towards your spine and slowly release back to neutral your feet will come up to your feet will come back up toward the ceiling and you'll repeat that feet to the right right hemi pelvis is forward toward the floor right elbow lifts your face is to the right right elbow lifts and your right shoulder shoulder blade come towards your spine and let everything relax we'll do that one more time everything doesn't exactly relax because your feet come back to center okay head to the right stays to the right feet to the right right hemi pelvis forward right elbow lifts to bring your right shoulder blade scapula towards your spine then your upper body relaxes your lower body your feet come toward the ceiling and now slowly lower your feet not too slowly but slow enough that you start to feel your hamstrings lengthen and now you're going to change the position of your right arm. Now you're going to bend your elbow, but your palm is going to go on the floor towards your face. So now you're in the opposite direction from where you were. Your face is to the right, your right palm, your right elbow's bent, your right palm is on the floor near your face. And now you're going to practice upper trapezius, an upper trapezius movement. You're going to just let your legs relax start to gently lift your elbow and feel your shoulder shoulder blade slide toward your neck and then slowly let your elbow and shoulder blade relax this is sometimes not an easy position to understand what your shoulder blade is doing but you might be able to feel a kind of sliding motion so you lift your you start to lift your elbow your shoulder shoulder blade are sliding towards your neck you're working into the upper trapezius this is an upper trapezius position and then you're going to slide your uh you're going to let your shoulder shoulder blade elbow relax we're going to combine that with the lower body bend your knees feet in the air to comfort you're going to breathe comfortably, probably on an inhale is going to be best. You're going to bring your feet to the right, your face is to the right still, your feet to the right, your right hemi pelvis is forward, your right elbow lifts, your right shoulder, shoulder blade are going to slide towards your neck. You're slowly going to release your elbow back down and bring your feet back up to center. And you're going to repeat that feet to the right, right hemi pelvis forward into the floor or toward the floor, lift your right elbow, sliding your shoulder, shoulder blade towards your neck. Relax your upper body, arm and elbow, let your feet come back to center. And now kind of slowly let your feet come down to the floor to lengthen the hamstrings again and now we're going to work with the lower trapezius the arm position is a, is the same sometimes i will slide my right palm up just a little bit for the lower trapezius but you're just going to as you do it you'll try to find a comfortable position so your right arm is still bent your right palm is still on the floor somewhere near your face, but now you're going to slide your right shoulder blade, shoulder, shoulder blade diagonally down your back, either toward your ribs on the left or toward your left hip. Now, you don't necessarily have to raise the elbow, but if you need to raise the elbow to get the, a feel for the move, you can do that. And you're going to let that relax and you're going to do it as a means whereby or range of motion movement where you're going to slide your right shoulder shoulder blade diagonally downward towards your left side somewhere and then slowly let that release or not so slowly and maybe do it again lower trapezius is this is often the trickiest this is often the trickiest one to do for a lot of people finding that lower trapezius 
and you're going to come to rest and now we're going to combine that with our legs so you're going to bend your knees your face is to the right you're going to bring your right your feet both feet to the right your right hemi pelvis is is rotating forward toward the floor you're going to slide your right shoulder blade diagonally down your back somewhere towards your left side rib cage or hip and then relax your upper body your shoulder shoulder blade arm and let your feet come back to center and you're going to repeat that rotate your feet to the right right hemi pelvis forward right shoulder blade slides diagonally down your back toward the left side and then slowly release out of that releasing the upper body position bringing your feet back to neutral let's do that one one more time feet to the right right hemi pelvis forward right shoulder blade slides diagonally down your back toward the left side slowly come out of that that move in the upper body arm shoulder shoulder blade bring your feet back up to the ceiling and slowly kind of slowly let your feet come down to the floor lengthening your hamstrings take care of your neck maybe you have to do some nodding maybe you have to pressure hands down and turn your face a little from side to side or or massage the back of your neck or um, do what you need to do to take care of your neck because now you're going to turn your face to the left your left arm is long at your side the back of your hand is on the floor near near your thigh you can do what you want with your right arm it can be long it can be bent it can be under your head i'm not so concerned right now about the right arm except for comfort so head to the left left arm is long put a little bend in your left arm your palm still stays uh, your palm will rise will will we'll come upward more towards your waist but it won't get that far probably and let your elbow rest on the floor and um, you may need a pillow under your elbow and now we're going to go to uh, rhomboids middle trapezius in the shoulder girdle you're going to raise your your faces to the left you're going to raise your left elbow but the what you're really doing is focusing on sliding your left shoulder blade towards your spine comfortably don't overdo it slowly come out of that letting your shoulder blade and elbow come back to its new neutral and whether you practice it more as a range of motion means whereby or you do it pendicularly practice that a few times your el your elbow comes up your shoulder blade left shoulder blade slides towards your spine comfortably your face stays to the left and then you let your shoulder blade slide back to neutral let your elbow come down. And let's combine that now with the legs. Bend your knees, feet in the air. Your feet are going to rotate, feet, legs, going to rotate to the left. Your face is to the left, your feet to the left, your knees to the right, your left hemi pelvis is coming forward. Leave, and you're going to raise your left elbow, bringing your left shoulder blade scapula towards your spine. Release your upper body and bring your feet back to center. And this is what we're going to do again. You're going to bring your feet to the left. Your left hemi pelvis is coming forward toward the floor. It's rotating forward to the floor. Feel that. And let your um, left elbow come away from the floor to slide your left shoulder blade towards your spine. It's really in the shoulder blade that we're working. 
for the upper body and slowly release the upper body. Bring your feet back to center. And then slowly let your feet come down or not so slowly, but maybe you'll feel those hamstrings lengthen. We have a lot of opportunity here to let the hamstrings lengthen. And now you're gonna change your left arm. You are, you're going to bring your palm on the floor near your face, your elbow will bend, but now, you're, now your forearm and hand are in the opposite position of where they were before. And we're gonna work with the upper trapezius position. Your face is to the left. You're gonna ra gently raise your left elbow and see if you can feel your left shoulder, shoulder blade slide towards your neck. And then you're gonna slowly release into length, letting your shoulder, shoulder blade, come to its and elbow come down to its new neutral and practice that again you can practice it as a means whereby range of motion or you can do it slower more pendicularly you're going to raise your shoulder left left elbow left shoulder shoulder blade come towards your neck slowly come out of that and now we're going to combine the upper trapezius position with our legs and pelvis. Bend your knees, feet to the ceiling, faces to the left. Your feet are rotating at feet legs, rotating to the left. Your left hemi pelvis is coming uh, forward toward the floor. Gently raise your left elbow and slide your shoulder, shoulder blade towards your neck, upper trapezius. Slowly release your upper body. Slowly bring your feet back to center. And you're going to do that again. You're going to, uh, faces to the left, bring your feet to the left. Your left hemi pelvis is coming forward. You're gonna raise your left elbow. See if you can feel your left shoulder, shoulder blade slide towards your neck. Slowly release your upper body, your shoulder blade, shoulder, elbow, and bring your feet back to center. Slowly let your feet come down or not so slowly, slow enough to feel that your hamstrings can lengthen, but we are going to be moving on. When your feet come down, rest, take a breath if you need to. <clears throat> and now we're gonna do the lower trapezius position with our shoulder girdle. Your hand, is, hand and elbow are basically in the same position. Sometimes I slide my palm up just a little bit for this one, but you don't have to. Let's practice. You're going to bring your left shoulder, shoulder blade diagonally down your back, either towards your right ribs on the side or your right hemi pelvis. And then you're going to slowly bring your elbow and shoulder, relax your shoulder, shoulder blade and elbow. I'm sorry, your elbow may not have come up. We're on lower trapezius. It's the, the movement, your elbow may participate some, but it's really in the shoulder, shoulder blade. So you're going to practice that. Face to the left, left shoulder, shoulder blade, slide diagonally down your back. You're going through your lower trapezius muscle. Toward, it's sliding towards the right side. That's where you're aiming. And now we're going to combine that with the feet. So bend your knees, feet towards the ceiling, face to the left, feet and legs rotate to the left. That brings your left hemi pelvis forward toward the floor. Slide your scapula, shoulder scapula diagonally down your back toward your right side. Slowly release your upper body and let your feet come back toward the ceiling. And let's do that again. You're going to bring your feet to the left. Your left hemi pelvis is going to rotate toward the floor. Slide your left shoulder blade, scapula down, diagonally down your back toward the right side. 
slowly let your upper body come to a position of uh, relax in its position and let your feet come back to center because of time we're going to move on so slowly bring your feet down lengthening your hamstrings if you need to center your head for a moment again that's fine and we're going to now transition to supine on your back. Take care of your neck. If you need to move your neck around before you transition to lying on your back, that's fine. Good. Lie in a position of comfort. You may want support under your head. You don't want your chin to be tipping up toward the ceiling. If it is, it means you need support. And your knees can be long or bent or with a bolster underneath, whichever is more comfortable. Your arms are in a comfortable position. And Breathe comfortably, let your breathing be comfortable. Spacious pelvic floor, even in lying down. And notice where you feel support. Where is your body making contact with the floor, the surface below you? And um, um, where, you, where your body is touching, the floor or the surface below you, you want to yield into, you want your body to yield into that support. The more you can allow the places that are touching to, excuse me, to yield into support, the longer your muscles will become. It means you are letting go, it means your muscles are letting go into length you'll feel longer and broader and fuller. So even the back of your head, your hard skull, even has a little bit of muscle fascia, even your skull can yield into the floor. Your shoulder area, upper back, where it's touching, let it yield into the support of the floor. That is what support is about. It's about yielding your weight and your your, your body contact into support. And then coming down wherever you're making contact in your body, let it yield to support. And coming down into your sacrum and your buttocks, let it yield into support. And, um, and um, down your legs into your feet. Let it yield, let your, your legs yield into support, coming back up to the shoulders, down the arms, to the hands, to the fingers, whatever is touching, let that yield into support. And now one leg at a time, my colleague Kelly Peacock likes to say, Bend one leg and really plant your foot on the floor and then bend your other leg and really plant your foot on the floor. It's not, doesn't mean you're pressing into the floor. It means you're very consciously feeling each foot be in the floor. Let, the, let your foot, the bottom of your foot yield into the floor for support. And go ahead and gently begin to do some arch and flatten. When you arch, you're rolling towards your tailbone, coming a little forward of your, of your sits bones. And when you flatten, you're contracting your belly. You're going into a posterior tilt. Your low back will come closer to the floor and you're going back and forth. You can put your hands on your iliac crest, on your waist, 
around the sides of your waist and you can feel as you go into an arch, you're doing an anterior tilt. You can put the webbing of each hand on top of your hip bones on each side. And when you, when you go into the curl or gentle flat and contracting the belly, you'll feel your pelvis rock into a posterior tilt. Notice when you are going into the arch, the anterior tilt, hold that for a moment. Notice your lower back muscles contract. Whatever your position is, sitting, standing, lying, if, you, if your habit is to keep yourself in an arch or an anterior tilt, you are constantly contracting your lower back muscles. Come out of that slowly transition into a posterior tilt or flatten, curl, contracting your belly. Hold that for a bit. Notice when you go into the curl, try to take a deep breath. Notice that the contraction in the abdominal muscles is squeezing into the intestines and all the organs come out of that, going back into the arch. It isn't that it, it's perfectly okay to go into an arch and a flatten. We don't wanna be stuck in the arch. We don't wanna be stuck in the flatten. The other thing, the next time you go into the flatten, posterior tilt, see if you're squeezing the back of your your posterior anal triangle, squeezing around your anus. If you are stuck in a posterior tilt, no matter what your position is, you are squeezing your anus. Some people are doing that hours and hours a day in sitting. So you wanna be able to go into a position and you wanna be able to come out of that position and rest. You can we're, we're gonna do the next movement with our knees bent, but if you like to relax your legs long for a little bit, that's absolutely fine. Okay, bend your knees one at a time, feel that your each foot plant into the floor, then your other leg bends, plant that foot into the floor. I really like when Kelly leads that, I've learned a lot from doing that. It really makes a difference in my sense of, um, just maybe my sense of wholeness and stability. All right, I'm gonna lead you into another arch and flatten activity. I am not gonna get the instructions wrong. Please follow the instructions. You may wanna slightly separate your legs, not super wide, but especially if you hold your legs close together, you definitely wanna widen your legs some. You want a spacious pelvic floor. Let the spacious pelvic floor be a guide for you. And here's what you're going to do. We're gonna work with an arch and flatten, and we're gonna take it all the way through the legs to the feet. So here's the, here is the position. It may not be a position you're expecting. As you inhale and arch rolling towards your tailbone, your low back is slightly lifting. You're gonna let your knees roll inward and you're gonna roll inward to the medial side of your feet. You are pronating in your feet, it's also called eversion. And then come back out to your neutral and find an exhale and gently contract your belly to start going into a flat and a posterior tilt. Let your knees gently roll out a little and ro you're rolling onto the lateral outside of your feet you are supinating or inverting in your feet and come to neutral. And we're gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna guide you in this. You can go ahead on your own if you know what to do or you can wait for my instructions. Inhale, arch. You're gonna pronate or evert your feet that brings your knees in and you're resting on the medial border of your feet. As you transition, to a flatten or slight curl, posterior tilt. You are supinating or inverting your feet. Your knees are rolling outward. Go back and forth. If you're arching, you're pronating. That's also called eversion. You're on the medial border of your feet, medial arch area. If you are exhaling and flattening, contracting your belly, 
you are supinating or inverting and your knees are going out. P people often don't realize, but a very common pattern, not the only pattern, but this is my pattern. Uh, I tend to, in standing, I tend to arch and I tend to pronate and many people do. And many people, when they stand, they do post, they have a posterior tilt and they supinate. And you, that may not be your pattern, but you want to be able to practice different patterns where you can go into and out of in comfort, different ways of working your lower extremity joints. So last one, inhale, last set, inhale, arch, and you're pronating, knees in, and you're on the medial sides of your feet, you are um, everting, you're transitioning to flatten posterior tilt, you're transitioning to supinating knees out. Come to neutral and rest. Time is really sliding by, but let's do just a little something on the sides. And I'm gonna continue this theme of enhancing uh, your repertoire of somatic movements. Um, so turn onto the side of your choice, come into the chair position, use pillowing under your head. and drape your top arm on your side and just let your knees be comfortable, probably chair position, but if your knees need to be a little lower, that's okay. Leave your upper arm on the side of your body, bend your elbow and let your fingers drape towards your, towards your shoulder. So your arm stays along your side and your upper arm is actually on your side, not in the air, but your fingers are draped towards your shoulder, okay. You, you, we're going to do different. We're going to do different um, versions of this, and not a lot of repetition. So please follow along. Lower body is our regular lower body lateral flexion. Uh, knees stay touching as you raise your top foot. You'll internally rotate in your thigh. Bring your armpit at top armpit and elbow down towards your hip. Feel the contraction in your obliques, and slowly release. And, and come to your neutral. Now, bring your elbow point slightly in front of you. Start with it slightly in front of you and it'll, it'll enhance a little bit as we move. Second, second position is elbow in front, lower body stays the same. Bring your top foot up towards the ceiling, hike your hip. And now as you bring your elbow and armpit down, they're coming a little more forward and toward the floor, but they're still coming in a downward position. Maybe they're more headed towards your pubic bone in the center of your pubic bone. And then slowly come out of that, resting your upper arm against the side of your body. Now position your elbow a little behind you. Pick your top foot up to hike your hip. And as you direct your armpit and elbow down, your upper body elbow and armpit are a little behind you, but you're still contracting. You're in the posterior part of the obliques. Slowly release and relax to neutral. And if it's comfortable, you're going to lengthen your top arm and leg. Your top leg goes straight down and maybe slightly curves down your top arm if you can over your ear, but if you can't, you bring it more forward or leave it up in the air. But we're gonna add something, hip hike your bottom hip and open your top ribs more if that's comfortable for you. And then slowly release, come back down, let your arm drape along your side. And we're gonna do that lengthening again, it's got two parts. Lengthen your top arm and leg. Your top arm, if it can, is lengthening more over your ear. Your top leg is going more straight down. Don't go all the way because when you hip hike, go ahead and hip hike the bottom hip. 
It opens your top ribs more and it gives you more length. We don't want to go into a stretch, but we want to really work with the elasticity in our tissues and then slowly release. Bring your arm down. And because of time, it's always great to transition and lie on your back for a while, but we're going to go right to the other side. So make your way comfortably to your other side and we're going to repeat this. Chair position for your lower body or, or comfortable with your knees. You're going to your upper arm is going to be against your ribs on the side and you're going to bend your elbow and your fingers are draping towards your ceiling, uh, towards your shoulder, not towards the ceiling, towards your shoulder, top shoulder. You're going to keep your knees together, bring your top foot up, that rolls your thigh inward to hike your hip, bring your armpit and elbow down, your head may or may not raise up. and slowly come out of that. Now let your upper arm elbow come a little more forward and you'll go into the second round, uh, foot up to hike your hip. And now your armpit and elbow are rolling more forward, your chest is rolling more forward toward the floor. So your elbow is pointing maybe more towards your pubic bone or even towards your opposite hip, depends how far you go. And then slowly come back onto your side to your neutral. And now point your elbow behind you Bring your top foot up to hike your hip. And as you bring your elbow and armpit down behind you, let your head follow, let your upper back follow backward a little bit just to comfort. Slowly come back to your neutral. When you get to your neutral, you can just drape your arm long. And we're gonna move into a lengthening, lengthen your top arm and leg. Um, your, your, your arm and leg are relatively straight on your lateral line, but you can arc them down toward the floor. Don't go all the way or back off a little bit so you can hike your bottom hip and that's gonna open your ribs, your top ribs even more and then slowly release. Come in back into a position of relaxation. We're going to repeat that one more time. Lengthen your top arm and leg. Don't quite go all the way so you can hip hike the bottom hip and that's gonna open your top ribs more. Just work with the elasticity in your tissues. Don't overdo it. Really feel the elasticity. Maybe back off a little bit and come in a little bit and then slowly come to neutral, resting your arm in a comfortable position and turn over onto your back. And take just a moment to rest on your back. We'll do a couple of closing moves before we stand. Here's a variation in the twist that I like a lot. Our lower body is going to more or less be the same where we rotate our legs from side to side. There's so many variations you can do, but with this variation, you're going to grab your right hand is going to grasp your left elbow, your left elbow, your right hand. So your forearms are in the air above your chest. If that's too much to hold, you can bring your forearms down lower. Keep your lower body stable for just a moment or relatively stable. And now when your upper body, rotate your arms, your rib cage and your head in one direction, right or left, feel the rotation, feel your shoulder blade, your top arm, that shoulder blade is going away from your spine and the bottom arm, your shoulder blade is going towards your spine. And now rotate the other direction Really feel the rotation in the rib cage, in the shoulder girdle, in your head and neck. 
Note the scapulas. This is great for the scapulas and go back and forth a little bit for your shoulder girdle and scapulas, as well as your rib cage, rotating from side to side gently. Feel your rib cage, feel your shoulder blades. Okay, come to one side, gently and hold, come to one side. Now gently start bringing your knees opposite. Sometimes you have to release and go back a little towards center with your upper body. Okay, leave your knees there. Bring your upper body to the other side, so the same side that your knees are. Get your upper body rotated. Bring your knees to the opposite side. It's just a little bit of syncopation or a little bit of variation in timing. Bring your upper body in the opposite direction. Leave your knees there. Now your upper body is rotating in the direction of your knees. Now bring your knees opposite. I just play with different variations. Bring your upper body in the direction of your knees. Then bring your knees to the opposite side. Come back to center and rest. Rest in a position of comfort. Arms down, legs can be long or bent. Then we're going to end the floor movement. I know you can't guess this, but we're going to end with an arch and curl version on the diagonal. We're going to do the one we did last month, and I'll guide you through it. Um, you can have whichever combination of arm and opposite leg you want. I'll guide you. For those that are, are, don't know the directions as well, you're, bend your knees plant, one leg at a time, plant your foot on the floor, and then the other foot and plant it on the floor. Bring your right hand behind your head, and your uh, feet are both going to start on the floor, but you're going to end up lifting your right, I'm sorry, you're going to end up lifting your left bent leg eventually. First, you're going to inhale and arch. And as you exhale and curl, you're bringing your right armpit to your left hip, not elbow to hip or elbow to knee, but right armpit to left hip. That's going to help you get the rotation in your lower body more. Usually people get the rotation in their upper body, but they don't get the weight shift in their lower body. Come back down, inhale and arch. We're not nuancing the arch. You can do that either on the midline or you can do it on the diagonal, but when you exhale and curl, right armpit to left hip, you, the weight will go in your, if you're doing my directions, the weight will go into your left hip, your right hip hemipelvis will rise a little bit as you direct your right armpit towards your left hip hemipelvis. It gives you a bit more diagonal. People will sometimes tell me they feel their obliques, their, the diagonal function of their obliques a lot more uh, with this particular move, but you'll feel whatever you feel. Complete the one you're in the midst of and change your hand position. Left hand, if you're following my directions, left hand behind your head, you're gonna end up picking up your right leg. You're going to inhale and arch, exhale, left armpit to right hip, whichever hip is coming up, your weight shift goes in your opposite hemipelvis. In my directions, it would be your left hemipelvis. Come back down, really try to get, you have a contralateral movement. And again, inhale, arch, exhale, left armpit to right hip. That means your weight is going into your left hemipelvis. And slowly come down. Complete the one you're in the midst of and rest. We are right at the 1115 time, but I do, if you, if you have to go, I understand, I do want to just have you roll to one in a moment, <laughs> let yourself rest. I want you to uh, roll over to one side and uh, come up to standing. I just want to repeat the 
uh, walking move we did at the beginning as an assessment. So if you can get yourself off the floor <laughs> and come to standing, and then you're going to, <clears throat> you're going to bring your hand, you're gonna stand well, spacious pelvic floor, you're not arched, you're not flattened, you're neutral, you've got a nice internal midline, you can breathe, your teleceptors, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth are horizontal to the floor, your neck is long but not stiff. Put your hands on your hip pointers or the as is on each side and just take a little walk. You can walk anywhere you want and notice as you walk, whichever leg, you might have to slow down your walking, whichever leg is coming forward, is that hemipelvis coming forward? Maybe you feel, well, you feel whatever you feel. Maybe you feel the hemipelvis that was not participating as much or was stuck, maybe it's coming more forward. Or maybe one hemipelvis wasn't moving at all, maybe it's moving. Maybe one hemipelvis was coming quite a bit forward than the other one, and now maybe they're a bit more equal. But this is a really good, nice little assessment. As you're walking along, you can do this just to feel where you are with the balance between your right and left hemipelvis coming forward in walking. And that is officially going to end our class today. I will stay after class for discussion, but I'm going to officially uh, say goodbye and I hope people um, I hope to see you next month, but I will put all of this, uh, Isaiah will put all of this on my YouTubes and, and website, et cetera, next, by next Tuesday afternoon. Thank you, everyone, and um, I hope you have a really good month. I'm going to end the recording now.